Okay, so we've seen that you can use LabVIEW Vision VIs to read images from a file. So we want to capture images using different kinds of cameras, and there's many types available. You know, PCI cards for um, accessing uh, uh, and streaming sources. There's USB cameras, firewire cameras, wireless cameras, Ethernet wires. Uh, sorry, Ethernet cameras as well. Um, we're going to be using USB cameras. They're readily accessible, low cost, and um, they're probably the slowest cameras around, but for what we're doing, that's good enough. Uh, for our application, we found that because of everything that's going on in the computer, we can get about 10 frames per second, although I think we can also get up to about 30 frames per second in, in in some of our applications. It depends again on the computer, the software environment. Um, it's not a what you'd call a real-time environment, so we are subject to all the processes going on in Windows, and that, that actually tends to be more, place more restrictions on performance than anything else. This slide shows the uh, code, the graphical code for a simple um, acquisition from a USB camera. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this. This is uh, an example. I'm pretty sure that I based on one of the examples in, in available in the LabVIEW install in installation. Let me show you the uh, the actual VI and bring it up here just to show you. And let me bring in the context help so you can see the different VIs. So this uh, first VI here opens up the camera. So that'll prompt me to show you, well, where does that information come from? The session in here refers to the actual camera, and it says Cam 4, right? And so the, if I click on this control, there's several, several cameras available. So that's where do you find that information? Well, you should open up your NI Max, and under here, under the devices and interfaces, right? Just like you have, I have a MyDAC, for example, you've played around with the MyDAC already. You should see if you've installed the image acquisition software, uh, any iMac devices or iMac DX, which are direct show type devices. I have several here. The camera that you're going to use is the Logitech Webcam Pro. I'm actually using that for um, for for visualizing myself here, but I'm I'm actually going to use for the um, uh, experiments that will run here this uh, IPvo I Ziggy HD. It's a high de high definition dot cam that I've been using and. Um, when you click on that camera, you know, you can take pictures with it, you can grab, which means a continuous um, acquisition. So let me do that. And so you can see the image comes up and now you can test your setup. This is how you want to configure it. And actually, if you right click on that image, right clicking and go zoom to fit, you can fit it within the view window. And so now you can see and you can adjust, say, you know, you're adjusting this, make sure that it's in the center of the camera view, adjust your camera, adjust the height of the camera, and so on. I've adjusted the focus already, but uh, I'll show you how to do that shortly. Um, I, I, I like to use a fixed focus rather than not a focus because you don't want this going in and out. Also, sometimes if the lighting changes, it tends the camera will tend to autofocus. Um, so check out that. I'm going to stop grabbing and show you that the other thing that you, you can play with in NIMAX are the acquisition attributes and the camera attributes, and those are important. The camera attributes, this is where you, know, you can go in here and play with the brightness, uh, contrast, focus. So if you uh, open up this guy, you can put it on manual or auto. Again, I have it set already on manual. When you click on here, you can put it on manual or auto, and you can adjust this level also. A slider pops up. I'm not going to play with that. Once you change anything here, you should hit save. And on the acquisition attributes, you can change the the settings on the camera, for example, on this stock cam, it gives has a, several different video modes. The one that I changed that I found that I had to change was because uh, by default this camera had a very high high definition, so it, it was set at 2592 by 19, and also two frames per second, which was way it was running really really slow, and I didn't um, realize why it was doing that until I came and looked at the, at the acquisition attributes. I also changed this to RGB 32 here. When I change it to 640 by 480, then, then it, it cuts down also in the amount of memory and, and the amount of processing that it has to do so your programs will run a little bit faster. So 
always check out this uh, this is just the camera information note that it says here oh the bus type is a direct show type camera and that's what these DX cameras refer to right so these DX uh, iMac dri uh, uh, drivers will work with these kinds of cameras okay so let me close that sometimes if you have a camera open this way uh, certainly if you have it running and you try to run it in lab view you'll get a conflict and it might not run you get an error so I'm, I'd like to close not, and I you may not have to try it and see what happens. So I'm going to run this guy, and you can see what's going to happen. It's just going to take a picture, and now you've you can now, as we said before, look at the size of the picture, the, the number of pixels. You can check pixel locations. In fact, um, later when we uh, look for the vertex location, the zero location, here's a good way that you can do it. You can just come in here and actually find the pixel location. It's 328, 348 is the vertex about right there. And then the zero position uh, for the bob is uh, about through 244, 246. We'll check that in a second on another BI that I'll, that I'll show you. So let me close this one. As you can see, it's very easy to just build a simple acquisition BI. And this slide just illustrates the front panel for when I first ran that, that kind of acquisition example. Uh, for another snapshot of another image I have. And this is just summarizing to remind you uh, uh, on, I, on using NIMAX uh, the kinds of, of settings you should look for and set up. Let me show you another example that actually combines with the acquisition that we just saw the count object. So now what I'm going to do is together acquire an image and then do a count objects on it okay um, so this all of this remains the same except now I pass see I pass that image to the cast make a grayscale send it to the region select and then send it to my count objects right now the count objects remember you're going to have to set these uh, adjust some settings, you have to adjust the threshold and so on. And also what comes out of here that's of interest to us is for every object it finds, for the, what's going to come out of this objects here is going to be an array, a 1D array of all the objects it finds. So let's say it finds three objects, you'll get three array elements. Each one is a cluster of six elements and each um, element within that cluster uh, for example, the first one is the object center, which is a cluster itself of the XY position. This is what we want in particular, but there's other things here, the bounding box coordinates of, around an object if you want them, and also the uh, the area of the object that might be of interest. Let's say you're trying to find the sizes of things, and, and you have a calibration for what that means, and that's a nice way to measure sizes. Um, so we're going to, first I'm going to show this to you, and then later on I'll, I will show how we can extract XY from this cluster. Okay, let's bring this out of the way. Let's run this guy. Okay, so see what happens is when you acquired that image and then it went to uh, and it cast the image into grayscale, and now I'm looking at tell it, it's asking me to select a rectangle. I'm going to look at this whole image here, uh, this whole region here, and say, hey, uh, look at this. Uh, find objects in here according to the settings that I've already put here, and note. What I have found is two objects. Object zero is the center. It's found at Bob. And object one is this big old mass here. It's found all of this here. And those objects are found according to the settings. I've told it to find a dark object on a white background with a threshold that's 100 or less, right? And also the size. It's, uh, it's looking at objects only that are 50 pixels total and less than 8,000. So these two fit the bill. If I um, restricted this, and let's say I had put 5,000 here and I run this, see it, it rejects that one. So that's one way that you can reject objects that you don't want if their size is too big. You can just uh, use the size uh, restriction on there or you can use threshold. So again, it takes a little bit of tuning. Um, Note these options. It's showing me the search area. It's showing me the center. It's kind of nice. And it's showing me 
a bounding box on each object that it finds. Um, so that's another little example building up on your understanding of how to use that revision.